Hey guys, Captain C.A. Richardson here. Want to talk a little bit about how we come up with the names for our mirror lure baits, our custom colors. That's right, it's a question I get all the time. Well, I started out here near the fire pit in the horseshoe pits because that's where most of the ideas, well, that's the genesis of them. That's where they come from. Uh, and I'd be remiss if we didn't throw in a couple of these little brown bottles. Uh, they kind of help with the creative flow, if you will. But I'm going to walk you back here to my shop and we'll break down a couple of the colors and we'll talk a little bit about why we do it that way. Because Mirror Lore has always just numbered these baits or given them some type of an abbreviated color. And I don't like to do that. Um, that's just to give you an idea of what you're buying. I think it's a lot more relatable if I just talk to you about something that you understand and then you get it. Because if you get it, well, then you'll probably buy it. So let's go inside the shop, talk a little bit about how we do it. All right, back here in the shop, uh, I broke out about eight different colors. We've got way more, but you don't have that kind of time. And, you know, I probably don't either. There's probably something I should be doing. But uh, here's how the whole creative process starts. You remember that Coors Light, right? Okay, well, we do write the stuff down. And on this list, which I will read to you, there's a couple of base colors for each species that works really well. Like for trout, pink, chartreuse, white, all those are great colors for trout. So when I'm coming up with a bait, I consider that a lot. That's why a lot of those baits have those colors. Uh, for redfish, it's mostly green, brown, any earthy combination that I can come up with. Uh, so those are, are considerations that I always make. And then for snook, I always think silver, gold, white. It's got to be a bait fish. It's got to look something like that. So those, those are the, the true base colors that I'm trying to work off of most of the time. But there are other considerations. One is water clarity. Another would be ambient light. Another might be regional patterns. If I'm trying to get a bait that might be hot out in Texas or something that might be a better bait for North Carolina or South Carolina, I got to consider that. Then there's always that lore history that I have. All the baits that I've used over the years, some that are still current and some that are long since been discontinued that I like to um, work off of. And then naturally I have descriptive expression. And that's where I come up with something that's relatable to that color that you guys put together as something cool. And then probably lastly is the review for my fishing buddies. Now, if I come up with a cool enough name, they're all, hey, you gotta do that, man, you gotta do that. But the ultimate decision is often made, believe it or not, by my wife, Blondie. That's right, she keeps the professionalism in it. And what I mean by that is there's been a lot of bait names that have hit the cutting room floor Blondie said, that's not too professional. So, let's look at a couple of these baits right now. All right, guys. Here's some of the baits we're going to talk about today. And let's just hit them one at a time. All right, first one, key lime pie. Well, obviously, it looks like key lime pie. You've got the bright lime back, which is bright lime chartreuse with a night glow body. That's a great trout color. It's a great snook color. Basically, it's great nighttime bait or super low light bait where you're trying to have a fish pick it up from a great distance. Uh, two, the dude. Now, I designed this bait really for the Texas guys, more or less, but it works great in Florida. It works great in any situation where you have clear water. But this color has been rock solid out there in Texas for a long time, any bone colored bait. Now, I call it the dude because of the cocoa back and the cocoa belly with that bone colored flank. And a lot of that had to do with them sitting out there thinking, you yeah, know, what would Jeff Bridges, the big Lebowski, call this bait? He'd probably call it the dude. And that's how the dude got born. Um, another color I like in particular for trout, and this works great in North Carolina, is the pink shiner. Cracked glass look, silver sides, very iridescent, very scaly, with a hot pink back. 
white belly, the red eyes that make it stand out a little bit. That pink shiner has been a great East Coast trout bait for me and all of our contingent up in that region. And lastly, in the MR17s I'm looking at here, this is the Texas tea, another bait that works great everywhere. I was gonna call it sweet tea at one time. I was gonna call it a couple of different things like fish whiskey and things like that. But we've already named other baits um, close to that color. But Texas tea gave it an identifier for fishing some of those tan and water rivers and fisheries. Works great in Louisiana, great, works great in a lot of places in Florida, especially in the Everglades and 10,000 Islands. This is an awesome bait, the Texas tea. Cracked glass, uh, looks a little bit like the old school golden retriever that we used to have or the RB color at Miralore, so it's been great too. Now, so I don't make this clip too long, I'm gonna go to the 27s next stay tuned let's talk about a couple more colors uh, one of my my favorites is the mangrove honey gold cracked glass sides dark olive back brown belly really great south florida bait whether you're fishing the everglades or you're fishing charlotte harbor tampa bay a number of places this is a standard in any box and these appeal to all three species both redfish trout and uh, snook. Uh, a great dark water bait or kind of challenging light bait would be the low country boil. It's a really bright bait. Works great for trout. Honest to goodness, it's a great trout bait. But redfish love it too. And if you're in the right situation, low light, I think you'll find that the snook will gobble it as well. Uh, another one of our colors, and, and a lot of like mangrove honey, it's because I fish that thing next to mangroves all the time. The Low Country Boil Well, I was trying to come up with a name for that bait, and the only thing I could come up with that looked anything like it was a big Low Country Boil. Now this one, well, it's got one of those names I got by a blondie with, and that's the Red-Headed Stepchild. A lot of chrome baits catch a lot of different fish, especially fish that are focused on fin fish, and that's big trout. That's big snook but i needed another color to make it stand out of the school well that color is bright bright red i put the uh, clear eyes in there just to give it a little bit more contrast so this is an excellent snook and trout bait one of my favorites redheaded stepchild gets your attention uh, because we want the fish to treat it like a redheaded stepchild uh, another one, um, and this was probably born out of my love for Pilar Rum and the Ernest Hemingway group. This is the Dark and Stormy. You know, it's got that purpley, silver, rainy looking color to it. It's a really good color in the rain. It honestly is. It's a good bait to throw, well, when it's dark and stormy. So as much as it's named after the popular rum drink, it's just as effective in those conditions. So I had a little fun with those colors, uh, a lot of fun with the names. And like I say, you know, you gotta, you gotta come up with something that's relatable to the bait. And that's what gets your guys' attention most of the time. Now we're gonna wrap this up because I wanna talk to you a little bit about Flats Class YouTube. Hope you enjoyed that little, you know, walk through on all the, the bait colors. It's not every bait color. We've got all kinds of colors. We've got redneck margarita, we got bleach blonde, we've, we've got easy money. We've got a lot of great colors at CaptainCARichardson.com. But most of them are born out of necessity, need. That's what we design the baits for. We, we pick them all based off what we think we can catch on them. We just like to have a little bit of fun with them. And I think it makes it a lot of fun for you guys too to, uh, yeah, well, to own some of these things and have them in your tackle bag. Hopefully one day they'll actually be collector's items. If you like what you're seeing and like what we're doing here at Flats Class, I encourage you, I mean encourage you, to go ahead and subscribe to Flats Class YouTube. Pass all this info on to your fishing buddies. We're here to not only educate you uh, but entertain you as well. We've got podcasts on here now. We've got television shows on here now. We've got product reviews on here now. We've got a lot of stuff. So if you like what you see, give us that big thumbs up, like I said, and subscribe. Until next time, Captain C.A. Richardson from Flats Class YouTube, signing off.